so it's time for another gardening week video and i've been taking a bit of a rest from gardening because i've been pretty busy over the last two weeks um and really just sort of juggling things around on the plot uh in the main so just taking covers off and moving covers around and protecting the polytunnel because we've had a couple of frosts uh you know giving it a good fleece uh fleece blanket in some cases a double thickness fleece blanket and everything's looking just really lovely now so um that's no problem i also had quite a few questions about sort of you know when and how to manage your early crops so i made a video especially about that which you can see uh go live in a few days so i'll show you around the plot and how it's changed and you know i always do this about this time in april it's always slightly nerve-wracking you know because if we get any it's not so much the cold because everything's you know can cope with the, the odd frost now it's more for me just about you know really high winds can damage stuff anyway let's take a look at that so that's going to be a pepper bed it's got kale in at the moment uh, so i've moved a low tunnel over that and moved the netted frame that was over that over here because obviously these kales don't need a low tunnel to protect them now i've taken the low tunnel that was over these peas and there's just some sort of kale and onions and lettuce and things down there and that low tunnel is now down here and it's going to be over early french beans and a couple of tomato plants oh yeah i've also taken the cover off these cauliflowers and calabrese taken most of the cold frame tops off now so that one is parsnips and shallots this one is carrots and it's about to get its fleece covering this one is radish and lettuce and i will have a new cover back over this one because it's going to be melons or courgettes or something like that but uh Obviously right now, lettuce and radish don't need a cover. And I've swapped this, so this was a low tunnel and it's over my early Brussels sprouts. And obviously again, they don't need a cover now. So that cover's gone over here and that is another pepper tunnel. So all of my low tunnels now are kind of where they need to be. And uh, that's a nice feeling. And I've got the last of my summer and early autumn carrots in so i'm just thinning out my parsnip seeds as well just doing the early bon the ones early ones and i have had one station that didn't germinate in another bed and so i have just transplanted one of my seedlings into there Obviously it's not ideal to be transplanting parsnips, but I think it's better than nothing. You might get a forked root, but they're still edible. So I think that's all of them. So I've also planted my first French beans in this container in the polytunnel, and I will just fleece this for the first few days just to help them adapt to the conditions in here and um, because of the draft through the store and the rest of what i've been doing is in the kitchen garden so i've been doing quite a lot there so uh, we'll take a look at that now so in the kitchen garden mostly what i've been doing is taking all the nets off and just going through weeding all the beds and checking them out and i've also watered in the slug nematodes it's a good time of year to do it you know soil temperatures is above six degrees now and um it, you know it's just at the point now where slugs are starting to be an issue i only generally do uh, slug nematodes in the spring in the kitchen garden and i do them in the autumn on the allotment because i grow so much over winter it's good to kind of knock them back a little bit uh, I'd, they're too expensive to do them sort of every six weeks in both gardens and I've also just put up my climbing beam frame 
and I always like doing that it's quite a nice uh, quick job but it just kind of improves the aesthetics of the garden I think giving it a little bit of vertical uh, structure and but half maybe not half a third of my polyton strawberries in the hanging baskets into the kitchen garden as well just so that we've got the option to snack on those in the kitchen garden as well as in the polytunnel and I've just put the strings in for the peas so I think that's pretty much everything that I've done gardening wise this week and of course it wouldn't be a gardening week without harvest so let's take a look at that so here we are again another great harvest end of April it's looking a bit green but I'm doing my best to keep a bit of colour in it. So what have we got? We've got Crown Prince Squash, Mega Beetroot. Um, beetroot's coming on actually, you know, on the allotment, the fresh New Year stuff, but we've got loads of stored stuff as well. So we need to resist harvesting new season stuff when we've got old season stuff. Um, talking of old season stuff, these are the last of the carrots that I stored in the compost. And they're looking pretty good, I think. Um, I'm quite pleased with those. We've got three weeks supply in the fridge. And then we're on to the new season carrots, which are ready now. So, you know, that's all good. They're just getting bigger and bigger. That, we're giving away the last of the garlic now because we've got green garlic. We like green garlic. And this garlic is not going to last much longer. So, pleased to be rid of that. One less thing to store. And then we've got mixed kale leaves, absolutely gorgeous, I think these, absolutely fantastic. And these are the last of the overwintered kales, because the last bed I harvested today, because it had really bad cabbage aphid, I just didn't want it to cross-contaminate with the new season kales, which are ready. So that's good timing again. And the Brussels sprout leaves are ready as well. And actually some of those Brussels sprouts, the early ones, are going to seed. It is very variety specific. I've only found one variety that does really well over winter and doesn't go to seed, and that's fill basket. And uh, yeah, the others, breast I think, that I tried, they're all going to seed. So that means a massive leaf harvest, so I'm not so worried about that and field bean tips looking good i just had to stop to uh, harvest a little insect from the field bean tips and just got another one as well um and i think what have we got one maybe two more harvests of the field bean tips because we need to plant that bed um with the new season brassicas so that is fine because We'll have broad bean tips for a while and then, oh, it just goes crazy, doesn't it? So parsley, again, it's looking good. More kale, celery. I'm just taking these little leaves off the old overwintered celery plants. They're quite nice. Um, and spinach, this spinach is going to seed now, but unlike lettuce, it go, when it goes to seed, it goes really bitter. Spinach is, is not too bad. Um, but we'll be on to uh, new season spinach soon so this is the last i think of last year's sown spinach and yeah it's not it's not too bad as you can see um potato so this is the last of lots of lasts in this harvest the last of the potatoes from dug up from containers and I, I think they're pretty good to be honest um lovely and firm still good eating quality skins are in pretty good condition there's like a little bit of scaling on them if you look like really close but yeah not a problem anyway new um new potatoes next week green garlic absolutely great and obviously this just gets better and better you know because it's growing really strongly now um so i don't like to pick too much of it now because i know that if i wait a couple of weeks you know it'll be sort of twice the size but anyway you've got to eat so um i do pick some of it and purple sprouting broccoli i actually think this is probably the last harvest we might get a few sprigs 
off it. Um, and I don't think I'll have Calabri. I was hoping I would have Calabrese to follow on from the Purple Sprout in Broccoli uh, next week, but I don't think we'll, you know, maybe a few weeks now, but looking at it, I don't quite know why the Calabrese is a little bit behind where it normally is. I don't really worry about it. We don't have any onions now, uh, stored onions, but obviously we've got all these beautiful, like, giant salad spring onions or green onions, whatever you want to call them. And leeks, I think I've got two weeks of leeks left. And then we're on to the elephant garlic and the bigger green garlics. Started harvesting whole plants of these joy choy, uh, these Asian greens, because we've got a lot of them and I need to get the beds all cleared, ready for the peppers. So no point harvesting individual leaves at this point. Take the whole plants, it's a lot quicker. Oh, a bit more kale. <laughs> Um, and these beautiful purple salad onions. And again, I'm kind of clearing beds because I need to make space for the red cabbages, but I've still got plenty. And then these are the Asian greens to go in the salad mixes. And again, these beds are being cleared gradually uh, to make way for the peppers. And then I won't actually have Asian greens for um, a month or so um, because they just go to seed too quickly um, and so I'll start those again in the summer and this is clearing beds again this is tatsoi it's looking really great um, but it is starting to go to seed so basically I'm taking whole plants out as soon as they start showing a sign of going to seed asparagus coming on quite good and then got all the salad mixes here and I'm putting obviously salad onions in here. I'm putting um, this red kitten spinach. This is the stuff on the polytunnel. It's a bit better quality um, in the salad mixes as well. And I'll show you the salad mixes now. I've made them all up, looking really nice. I don't actually have radishes because I forgot to harvest them, um, but I do have the Oh, come on, what's it called? Um, salad, no, wild rocket. So, yeah, it's a pretty good table, pretty happy with it. Still, like, we're in the middle of the hungry gap, so it's not too shabby. And I don't think I'll keep harvesting at quite this rate going forwards, but this is kind of my target anyway. So if I fill this table, I'm happy. If I don't fill this table, I'm not unhappy. I'm just... A I haven't quite met my objective. So, hope you liked this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.